Hi everyone, are you ready for our next lesson? Our lesson is all about sigma notation and here is our learning competency to be able to use the sigma notation to represent a series. Okay, let's define what is a sigma notation. In other textbook or references, we could use sigma notation as a summation notation also. Now, it is said to be a shorthand or shortcut for writing sums. And we use the uppercase Greek letter sigma to indicate the sum. There you have. Okay. And for the parts of our sigma notation, of course, the symbol is called now your sigma to represent the summation. And of course, this function is said to be your term or the summon. And of course, your i is represented by the index of summation. Some other references, again, it could be represented by any variables or any letters. Okay, and of course, this number is, of course, it called now your lower bound. Usually, this is, we usually start our substitution in our um, evaluating uh, sigma notation. And of course, the last one is our upper bound. This is usually we stop when we substitute our value of that to our sigma notation. So again, how do we read this? The summation of uh, 2i minus 1 as i goes from 1 to 3. Okay. Let's have evaluating sigma notation. As our first example here it says here, you are going to ask for the summation of k quantity k plus 1 as k goes from 3 to 5. So all we need to do here, guys, is simply uh, from our um, lower bound, which starts with 3, we are going to substitute the values of our k with 3. Afterwards, followed by 4, followed by 5. And we stop there with the upper bound which is 5 so that's the first step there you have it all your variables k are being substituted with 3 to 5 after that we are going to um, simplify it further so we have 12 we have 20 and 30 and then of course finally the summation of our um, given k quantity k plus 1 as k goes from 3 to 5 is 62 so again how do you do that? It's simply substituting our values of our lower bound until we reach to the upper bound. Let's try another example. Take a look on our second example. There are two variables which is being used, k and m. Okay. Did you know that some summation expressions have variables other than the index? Before evaluating a sum in summation notation, always make sure you identify the index and that you are only substituting into that index. So in, the, in this example, our index is being represented by letter M. So therefore, only those with letter M is to be substituted. So K there is, is to be remain as it is. Okay, and take note, our lower bound is one. So we started with one and then we end up with four, all the variable M or letter M. So there you have it. So 8k minus, of course, with 6, and then of course your m is to be substituted with 1. Take a look here. We have 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay. So afterwards, we are going to simplify it further. So there you have it. Um, 8k minus 6 quantity plus quantity 8k minus 12 plus 8k minus 18 plus 8k minus 24. So um, we all know that we have there your um your respect to your constants so all we need to do there is simply copy your 8k so 8k minus 60 okay so the summation of 8k minus 6m as m goes from 1 to 4 is simply 8k minus 60 okay how about this time it's a reverse we are going to write our um what do you call this one sigma notation so, for example, in this number one example, the given is 8 plus 11 plus 14 plus 17 plus 20. So, we are asked here to represent it in a sigma notation. So, as we observe, um, take, look, take a look on our given. Uh, is it a, an arithmetic series? Is it a geometric series? Okay. So, you notice there, 11 and 8. We have a difference of 3, 14, and 11, 3 also, 17 and 14, 3, 20 and 17, another 3. So therefore, we're going to use an arithmetic series, okay, with a 
dif uh, common difference of three, and of course represented by our first um, uh, what they call this first term as a sub one, which is a. Okay, so with that, okay, there you have it, and uh, we're going to use this um, n term, which is a sub n equals a sub one plus quantity n minus one times d. All we need to do there is substitute our a sub one, which is a. And of course, our d or common difference, which is 3. So there you have it. And then, of course, we're going to distribute 3 on your variable n or with this binomial. So we come up now with 8 plus 3n minus 3. Simply, this is distributive property. And of course, simplifying it further, we have 3n plus 5. This is now our n term. And of course, take note, we are asked you to write it in uh, sigma notation. So we are going to affix now our sigma. And then of course, our lower bound, we have started with 1. And again, um, we stop at what? We stop at 5 because we have 5 terms. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Since we have 5 terms, and of course, we have started with the lower bound, which is 1. Therefore, the given series can be written as the summation of 3n plus 5 as n goes from 1 to 5. Okay, so that's our um, uh, an example for writing in sigma notation. Another example, what if this time it's a fraction? 1 plus 1 half plus 1 fourth plus 1 eighth plus 1 over 16 plus 1 over 32 plus 1 over 64 plus 1 over 128. Okay, so what do you observe there is uh, do we have a common difference do we have a common ratio okay but of course if you notice our denominator they're all said to be what okay divisible by 2 okay so if it's divisible by 2 you notice here our first term a sub 1 is 1 and of course a sub n is simply n and take note our nth term here is 1 over 2 raised to n. Okay, let's check. What if our n is said to be 0? We started with 0. So 1 over 2 raised to 0. Any number or any variable raised to 0 is equals to 1. So that's our first term when n is 0. Uh, what if this time n is 3? Let's try 3. 1 over 2 raised to 3 is equals to 1 over 8. That is now our fourth term because 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, and what if we're not yet um, convinced that that's our um, nth term to be used? Nth, n is 5. 1 over 2 raised to 5 is equals to 1 over 32. Okay, there you have. And lastly, if n is 7, 1 over 2 raised to 7 is equals to 1 over 128. So therefore, guys, we could conclude here that our general term or n term is 1 over 2 raised to n and take note this time even though we have 8 terms but we have started our lower bound with 0 so therefore zero from 0 to 7 so there you have it our um, series can be written as the summation of um, 1 over 2 raised to n as n goes from 0 to 7 take note it doesn't mean that the first term should always be one but take note we have started substituting our lower bound with zero so that's our starting point which is zero and end up with seven which is the last term okay so that is for writing in sigma notation what if guys um we are going to evaluate a function or let's say evaluate a sigma notation uh, having a let's say a lower bound with 1 and then an upper bound of 50 or 100 okay so you notice there guys that uh, there are instances that we have a very long range of our lower bound and upper bound that if we try solving or expanding it manually it would consume us time so we have here the concept on telescoping sum when we say telescoping sums these are finite sums in which pairs of consecutive terms cancel each other, leaving only the initial and the final term. So let's try an example. An example here is you are asked for the summation of 4i minus 5 okay, as i goes from 1 
to 30. So the, uh, this is an example we're in if we work it manually from 1 to 30, so it would consume us time with this one problem alone. So but by applying telescoping sum, our binomial there is to be what? Uh, we're going to apply one property of the sigma notation uh, here, which is we have distributed our sigma. Okay, so there you have it. So summation of 4i as i goes from 1 to 30 minus summation of 5 as i goes from 1 to 30. So take note, we have just, uh, this is the one we referred to, leaving only the initial and the final terms. Okay, now extract also the constant in order that our i there could be mean now as substituting the value of our upper bound, multiplied it plus 1 to our upper bound. So there you have. 4 times 30 times 31 all over 2. There, that is a constant already. Okay, so again, the upper bound, add, 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 add 1 from it and then divide it by 2. So 30 times 31 times 4 over 2. On the other hand, on our constant here, it's just a matter of multiplying the constant times the upper bound. Okay, simplifying it further. 1,860 uh, 1, minus 150 is equals to 1,710. So therefore, the summation of 4i minus 5 as i goes from 1 to 30 is 1,710. Okay, let's try another example. What if this time a radical sign? Okay, just like for example this one. The summation of 1 over the square root of i plus 1 plus the square root of i as i is equals to 1 um, goes from 1 to 99 take note from 1 to 99 so it would consume us okay and of course applying another concept on radical sign on the denominator um, take note it's a binomial so we could just conjugate okay so when we say conjugate this time we get the opposite sign of our second term. If this is positive, we could use negative. Multiply both sides or both your numerator and then your denominator. With, with what? The square root of i plus 1 minus the square root of i. So there you have it. In order for us to omit or remove our denominator. And the remaining there is simply our the square root of i plus 1 minus the square root of I. Okay, this time, uh, when we apply telescoping sum, okay, our I here, automatically, it's just a matter of substituting the value of our upper bound, which is 99. Okay, and of course, for our second or final term, our I here, we could use now our, what, our lower bound. So, there you have it. The square root of 99 plus 1 minus the square root of 1, again, uh, on the first term, we would be uh, using the upper bound as in our i, and then on the final term, we have used now the lower bound. So simplifying it further, the square root of 99 plus 1 is 10, and then the square root of 1 is 1. So 10 minus 1, it's 9. So again, the summation of 1 over the square root of i plus 1 plus the square root of i, as i goes from 1 to 99 is what? Equals to nine okay so that's our uh, lesson for today we would sum it up okay uh, we have discussed sigma notation this is a, a said to be um, to represent sum of numbers when we evaluate sigma notation uh, do not forget our uh, substituting our values of our lower bound until we reach with our upper bounds and then of course simplifying it further Okay, when we write the expression in sigma notation, remember the concept of our sequences. It's either arithmetic or geometric. And of course, um, applying also, then being the, uh, having a common sense with respect to the given number. Okay, and of course, for telescoping sum, uh, in here we are going to um, omit or cancel some terms, only leaving the first term or initial term and then the final terms okay so guys thank you for um, listening and of course hoping 
once again that you have learned something today. And of course, remember, handang isip, handa bukas, tara na, ML na tayo. Okay, and of course, uh, have a nice day guys, and uh, see you in the next lesson. And don't forget to subscribe in our page, and of course, like our videos. So again, 